Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This video is brought to you now. Um, so we were we were talking about finite field extensions on Friday. And let me recap the the big theorem that I proved on Friday, which is that when you take one field extension, you extend a field, and then you extend a field again. Uh, which is called composition of extensions. Um, you, if, if both of those extensions are finite, you get a finite extension in the end. Um, moreover, the degree, which just meant the dimension, the number of things in a basis, was the product of the two extensions that you took. So, so this is going to be about consequences and examples. <clears throat> So, um, so say you have the, the rational numbers and you add not one number, but two, two numbers. So this is a field extension of Q, of course. Um, so we have that this is the result of adding the root of three to the rationals and then adding the root of five to whatever you get. Um, so this is gonna be, so I know when, when you add the root of three, you get a degree two extension because uh, I know perfectly well that the minimal polynomial of root three over Q is x squared minus three. And I know perfectly well that that's an irreducible polynomial. Um, so, um, so I guess um, if I add these two, uh, these two numbers, what I get is, um, is that I can do this in two steps. First add root three, then add root five. Um, and the degree is gonna be the product of the degrees by the, the theorem we proved yes, uh, Friday. So um, this is two. So um, the degree, so by the way, Q, root three. So this is the smallest field containing root three and root five, but it's also the smallest field containing Q adjoint root three and then containing root five as well. So um, what is the minimal polynomial of root five over Q adjoint root three? Um, I mean, there's an, there's an obvious guess. Um, it should be, I, I hope it's, um, it's x squared minus five. So how could I check, um, well, the minimal polynomial by definition is the smallest polynomial, the smallest degree polynomial where root five vanishes. So I could look for a polynomial of degree one show that there isn't one. Or I could also, I think this is generally easier, just show there's only one irreducible polynomial with roots square root of five. Um, so I can show that this is the irreducible polynomial by showing that it's irreducible. So is this irreducible? Um, so now all the questions I'm asking are over this bigger field. It's the rationals, but it also has the square root of three in there. Uh, so is this polynomial irreducible? Pause the video, think about it. Um, so it is. Um, it's irreducible because, so why is it irreducible? 
it's still a field uh, you would join with three. So everything everything you know about polynomials over a field works over here. If it was reducible, um, then the factors wouldn't be able, they couldn't have degree zero um, because those are just units. Those are just elements of the field. The, so the factors would be degree one, which means uh, because I mean because they had to add to two. So how do you take two positive numbers and and get two? You can only do one plus one. If this was degree four, I couldn't just do this. I would I would have to figure out if it's possible that it decomposes as degree two plus two. Um, so if it was reducible, factors have degree one. And I know what a factor of degree one means. It means that um, this would, ha would have a root. Having a degree one factor over a field means that you have a root over that field because degree one factors are basically the same as roots. Um, so um, does it? So does we have a root? Uh, it doesn't. Let's see why. So I'm saying x squared minus five is irreducible over q root three because it has no factors of degree one because it has no roots because so what kind what would a root look like it would be an element of q joined with three which we know perfectly well what the elements of uh, an extension like this look like they look like polynomials in the square root of three of degree and most the degree of the extension, which is two. So polynomials of degree one are zero uh, with rational coefficients. So could this square to five? Well, just computed, um, I would have that a squared plus three b squared is five. Well, and then two a b root three is five plus zero root three. <clears throat> I still know how to square a sum. So this has no solutions uh, with A and B rational numbers. Um, so one, so let's use the linear algebra knowledge that we have. Uh, we know one root three is a basis of q root three over q because whenever you have a finite extension like this one the powers of that generator of root three uh, form a basis and you take the powers up until you're about to reach the degree of the minimal polynomial up until you get rid of three squared which is just a multiple of one uh, so if you have that a rational number times one plus some other rational number times the other basis element equals a rational number plus one plus another rational number times the other basis element. This means that we wrote the same vector as, um, as, the, um, as a linear combination of the basis in well, in, we wrote it in two ways, but those two ways, they must be the same because these are coordinates. Um, so the, I'm thinking of the elements of Q root three as vectors and the rational numbers as, well, they're, they're, they're scalars. So, um,
so I have the I have the same thing written in the basis in two ways. Those ways must be the same. So a squared plus three b squared must be five, and two ab must be zero. So two ab equals zero means that either a is zero or b is zero, and either a squared equals five or 3b squared equals five in this case from the other equation. Um, and we know that the square root of five, the square root of five or of five thirds, that those are irrational. So, um, this is irreducible. Um, so the degree of the root of five over Q root three is two. So the degree of this whole extension over Q is the product of the the results of the, the product of the degrees you get when you add root three to the rationals and then you add root five to whatever you get and both both of these are two so the degree of this extension is four and it's a finite extension so um Now that I know that this extension has degree four over Q, and I know that this number is algebraic over Q. I even know that the degree is at least four, at most four. And soon I'll know that it can't even be three. Um, and like I said on Friday, this is very nice. I, I don't need to start taking powers of this thing and see if I find a relation to to figure out a, a crazy minimal polynomial. I just I just know um, because uh, we showed on Friday that every finite extension is algebraic. Um, so. So let's keep looking at this example. So this is algebraic. Uh, root three plus root five. It's even, I, let's compute its minimal polynomial. Um, so I'm going to do it the, the guessing way where I just kind of, I know if I square, it's going to look very simple. Me will polynomial over Q. If I square, it's going to look easy. Uh, I just have three plus five plus two root 15. So x squared minus eight is two root 15. So x squared minus eight um, squared is um, sixteen. Four times fifteen. Um, so x squared minus 16 plus 64 equals 60. So x squared minus 16 x, x so fourth. Okay, um, 
So the minimal polynomial, um, it divides, um, it, it divides this one. because the minimal polynomial divides every polynomial where your element vanishes. Um, so is this one irreducible? Um, I'm not gonna get into this because I feel like they did a very similar one. Let's look it up. Uh, Okay, on the 19th, I did uh, root of two plus root of three, and I got a very similar looking linear polynomial. And what I did was just write down all the roots and they're gonna be the same this time, replacing fives by twos. And to see that there's no degree two factor, I just saw that no pairing of two of these is gonna give me a rational polynomial, a polynomial with rational coefficients. And, and that's all there is to it. Um, so, so I'm not going to do it again. It's it's the same, exactly the same. And you you have the you know page page nine in page eight and nine in in the notes from the nineteenth <clears throat> Father's Day. So. Um, So this is irreducible. So um, the degree of root two plus root three over root five plus root three over Q is four. It, um, this means that Q of, since this contains root three plus root five, it must contain the whole, the whole field. Uh, generated by these two, by, by Q and by this element. Um, so what I have now is that both have degree four. And um, one contains the other. So degree four over Q. So how, they must be equal. And, and this is nothing about fields anymore. This is about having two vector spaces over Q. One is containing the other and they have the same dimension. Um, and if you have a subspace of a vector space and, and it has the same dimension, it, it must be the whole space if the dimension is finite. So, um, so these two fields are the same. So actually this extension that didn't seem like it was necessarily uh, given by just adding one element to rationals actually is given by just adding one element to rationals. And this happens a lot um, that a lot of extensions are, are simple like this, but that's not gonna come up for a while. So that's one example. Are there any questions? I don't know. Uh, maybe I will know in the future if you ask me them. Um, so here's another example, application of, of this fact we just learned. Um, so, I mean, I'm not, I said that pi and e are transcendental. 
And this is very hard to prove. In fact, I have no idea right now how to prove it. Um, so let's just take that as a given. I don't even know how to show that irrational right now, to be fair. These are just like, I mean, it took until the 19th century for anyone to figure this out. Um, okay, so the theorem that I definitely know how to prove, um, given, given those two facts, is that either pi times e or pi plus e are transcendental uh, uh, either. I mean, at least one. So one of them, could it be both? It could, uh, but it can be neither. And the proof, so here's the proof. Um, suppose that it's, it's false um, and let's reach a contradiction. So neither neither is transcendental, so they're both algebraic. So this would mean that Q, so I have this extension of Q and this extension of Q um, is, uh, composition of two algebraic extensions, uh, two finite extensions, because pi plus C, I'm assuming is algebraic over Q. And here, this is also finite because what I'm adding is the product pi times C. This I'm assuming is algebraic over Q. But if you're algebraic over a field, you're definitely algebraic over a larger field because being algebraic means there's a polynomial that has pi times c as a root with rational coefficients. Well, then the same polynomial has the same roots and it has coefficients in a field that is just larger. It's just automatic. So these are both algebraic. So this tells me that this extension is the the, the extension, the composition of both is finite. Okay. So, um, so far, so far what? I don't know, take a minute to think about how am I going to show that this cannot be true. Um, you're going to, I'm not going to shut off for a minute. You're, you can pause the video. So what I'm going to do is look at a magical polynomial. X minus pi times X minus E. What is this polynomial? You know perfectly well what, what its coefficients are. Its coefficients are pi plus e and pi times c. So I wonder if I have just mentioned a field containing both of these coefficients. Yes, I have. Um, it's the field containing pi plus e and pi times c. So uh, the thing is, this is a polynomial with coefficients in this field. pi plus pi times. And what are its roots? Its roots, um, they're right here, are pi and e. Pi and e are, this is just a fact. This is not even assuming that these two things are algebraic. This 
it's just if you take the sum on the product, that's that gives you the coefficients of this polynomial. Uh, so so what now? So this will tell you that if you look at the whole so if you if you add now all these numbers actually adding pi or adding it would give you the same field because you already have pi plus e in there so you have the extension i was talking about where i add the sum and the product um but you also add the number pi this one is finite because pi is algebraic over this field. Because, because of this polynomial. Um, and this one is finite. Uh, it's right here. So the theorem would tell you that pi is algebraic over q. Um, so this is the composition of three finite extensions. And every finite extension is algebraic. So every element in there, such as pi, And this is a contradiction because it's a hard theorem, but it's still a theorem. So uh, I started with assuming that they're both algebraic. I reached the contradiction. So one of them is not algebraic. Uh, so, so which of pi plus e pi times e is transcendental? It could be both. Um, in fact, if I was going to bet, I would bet on it being both. But the thing is, nobody, as far as I know, you know, Google it, but as far as I know, nobody knows how to prove that either of this is transcendental, even though we know that one of them is, it's just, it's just stupid like that. What are you going to do? Um, how long have you talked for? Maybe I should stop it there. All right, one more thing. Rent. Yeah, gonna leave it there. Otherwise, we'll we'll die here. All right. Um, thanks for thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you all later. Bye.